have financial prosperity. It's important for you to prosper financially. It's very important. Even if not for yourself, for other people. There's a lot of hungry people around us. There's a lot of broke people around us. There's a lot of needy people around us. We've got to help them. But how are we going to do it? If we all think that we ought to cry to the government and tell the, the, the state government and, 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 or the federal government to do something. No. You ought to become so big that you don't have to have that. That he may cause the blessing to rest in thine house. Now, when you're not functioning like this, it doesn't matter how many times I pray for you. Your financial blessing will be hanging. You see, I may be calling your name in prayer. I may be de declaring blessings on your family. But that's not going to work. Because the blessing resting in your house. Flying over your house is different from resting in your house. It says that the blessing, the, the, the Hebrew word means to settle. See, the trouble with many people is that they are so money-minded, so money-hungry, that they think that these things are being done for the prosperity of the preacher. No, it doesn't matter what you give to me as a preacher. That cannot lead me into prosperity. My prosperity is dependent on my giving. And I'm smart enough to know that. That's the reason I give the way I do. See, anybody who holds back is a fool. That's what the Bible says. Okay, when you put the money in the bank, do you think that there is a special box in the bank where they will keep that money for you? What do you think? They will only write down how much you have against your name. They just write it against your name. Do you know what will happen to the money? Many people will be using your money. That's the first thing. They'll be using your money all over the world. Let me tell you, all the money you have in the bank, all of you here, there is no special box in the bank where they kept your money, where if they gave you a key, you only would go there and open it and bring out your money. It's not there. It's a figure that's written against your name. The money you put there last week has been given to somebody else to go and spend. And they wrote down how much you said you brought. You know what I'm trying to tell you? When you hold back, the money that you're keeping back only helps other people prosper. You are only holding back something in your mind. You see, at least when I want it, I'll get it sometimes. Because sometimes they don't get it. Holding back. Money is a spirit. Money is a spirit. Now, I don't have the time today to go into all of those scriptures. But see, in the book of James, it tells us that money will curse the man that hoards it. The man that will not let money move. Very sad. So you have a lot of people who have a lot of money and the money has cursed them. And so they have money, but they cannot enjoy the money. But God says, this is what you want to do, that the blessing may rest in your house. Why should you have money and your marriage is in disarray? And your children don't want you. Your neighbors cannot be at peace with you. What kind of prosperity is your own? You have money, your brothers and sisters cannot be at peace with you. You have money, but you are lonely, sad and unhappy. What kind of life are you living? Money is not everything, yet money is important. The importance of money is not in getting it and keeping it, or what money can buy. The importance of money is the influence that it has in the lives of others around you. You can use money to help people, to change the lives of others around you. That's why you need money. You need money to become a powerful influence. For example, on the 31st, I said that we transmitted life throughout the country and uh, on several stations and then on satellite to many nations. Now, that cost money. It wasn't free. It cost money to be able to influence so many people. And the reason we put money there is because our concern is the evangelization of the world. See, this is the place of our inheritance. This is the place that God wants you to leave you. At whatever level you may find yourself, you can leave in the Amplified. I want you to listen to it and read the verse. It says, remember this. He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. There are people who receive grudging. What does that mean? That is to say, others give to you little. They give to you sparingly. And when they give to you, they give grudging. They complain when they're giving to you. And they feel they have done you so much. It's something you have to look at in your life. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and reversed in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. 